Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Jenny and this is Arnold the Praying Penguin. And we share videos every Saturday about prayer, about exploring the Bible and about living out your faith. And this time last year, we created a video called How to Lead Prayers at Church. Now I didn't personally love how that video turned out, but loads of you have found it really helpful and the content is still perfectly good. So in that video, you'll find different top tips for how to lead prayers at church, how to lead intercessions. And we also shared a couple of different creative and fun ways to lead prayers in church. And at that time, that was kind of fairly early on in the pandemic, so we shared a few different ways of leading prayers creatively for online services. Now we're kind of heading in the other direction, heading back into church. Hopefully lots of us are now able to go and worship together in church buildings. So as it's been a whole year and as we're going back into church, I wanted to do a bit of an update, share some more different ways that we can lead prayers in church. We're not going to talk too much about kind of the top tips for how to do it. If you want those, I will link last year's video down in the description that has lots of really helpful tips on how to go about planning them, how to go about writing them and delivering them. In today's video, I'll be sharing some different ideas that you could try out in your own church. And I think these ideas would also work well whether you're praying as a, like a family group or in a youth group or other kind of small groups like that. Before we get into the new ideas, I did just want to mention a couple of different ideas that I've already mentioned in videos on my channel because these are basically prayer ideas, ideas for leading prayers in church that I love so much they got their own video. So I think it's definitely worth mentioning them again. The first one is praying the Ten Commandments. So this is a way where we can use the Ten Commandments from Exodus and pray through each of those commands that we were given. And there are actions as well to that. So again, that video will be linked in the description. The second one is we're going on a bear hunt prayers. So this uses the story we're going on a bear hunt and that kind of call and response uh, format to lead your prayers. So do check out that video. And we also have a guest appearance from Reuben the Bear in that video because if you're gonna go on a bear hunt, you need a bear. And then the final video I want to mention is a much more recent one, which was how to use the Lord's Prayer in your prayers. And I think that the ideas in that video could be used in your own personal prayer life, but could also be used as you're leading intercessions. If you're using the Lord's Prayer in your intercessions, which I know many, many churches do. So there are a couple of different ideas in that video that you could use. Okay, let's get into the new ideas. So our first idea is BSL prayers. But you could also use Makaton or American Sign Language or whatever sign language in your country. So for this idea, you need to learn a few different words in sign language and get the congregation to use those signs as they're praying. Now this can be done in two ways. They could either do that sign to help them focus on the thing that they're praying for or they could do the sign as a response to your prayer. Something to be aware of here is just to make sure that you are definitely staying with the same language. Don't mix up BSL, ASL, Makaton. Don't just squidge them all together. Make sure that you're really clear about which language it is that you're using because you wouldn't mix up different spoken languages. In the same way, we don't want to mix up different sign languages. And this is also a really good opportunity to introduce people to sign language and help them to learn a few basic signs. So for the purpose of a few different examples, I'm going to be using BSL, British Sign Language, but obviously you can use whatever sign language would be most appropriate for your congregation. So if we were using the signs as something to focus on, these would be different themes that you're praying for. For example, family, school, the queen, or the world. But if you were using sign language as a way of responding to the prayers, you might want to use different signs like thank you, sorry or help and that could be a way for the congregation to respond to their prayers using bsl and then you might want to finish by saying amen our second idea are i spy prayers and this is based on the game i spy i don't know if this is a particularly british game let me know down in the comments if you played i spy when you were a child wherever you live and we can find out which countries play this game and which countries are way cooler than us and have better games than this. Basically, it's a game that we would use on like long car journeys or when you were very, very bored and you would say, I spy with my little eye something beginning with A. It's Arnold. Okay? So things like that. The other people would then guess. They're like, oh, I think it's an alligator. 
obviously it's got to be something you can see so I don't know why you'd be seeing Arnold and an alligator at the same time but you might be or like she usually like cloud honestly but using this game you can get people to spot things around the church or around their home if it is online still or if you're live streaming and this could be things that you know are already there so kind of windows or the font or pews those kind of things that you know are in your church building or it could be things that you've purposely placed around the church ready for people to spot and then you could use each round of this game as a launching point into your prayers so for example you could say i spy with my little eye something beginning with d people can give their guesses and then you tell the answer as door and then you can lead into a prayer all about praying for more people to come to know God and for more people to come through the door to learn about God, become part of your Christian community and those kind of subjects. Just as an example, you can be as creative as you like with those. Our third idea are scavenger hunt prayers, which basically take the I spy prayers one step further because rather than just spotting something around the building, you're now getting people to go and look for things. So this could be find something beginning with F, or it could be find something yellow, or it could be find something smaller than a one pound coin. Those kind of things, you can really get creative with that. And again, it could be things that are already there, or things that you have purposefully hidden, ready for people to find. And just like the I spy prayers, these can launch into your prayers, or people could be going and searching for things whilst you're praying depending on your congregation or the group of people that you're praying with and how you think that would work with a different group. As we're going through these prayer ideas, we're kind of gradually getting more and more creative and more hands-on. So for our fourth idea, we have paper chain prayers. So for this, everyone will need a slip of paper and a pen or a pencil, and then you'll need staplers probably. So as you're praying, as you're leading the prayers, get everyone to write down something or draw something on their piece of paper. This could be absolutely anything they like, anything they want to pray for, or you could give a bit more guidance and a bit of a theme or suggest several ideas. So it could be for them to name a person that they want to pray for, a situation that they want to bring before God, a certain country that they want to pray for. And it could be something that you get them to add to as you're going through your prayers so that they end up with several different things on their piece of paper. And then when you're done, get them to get together with other people close to them and link their pieces of paper into a paper chain. Obviously make sure you're doing that safely and with whatever restrictions are in your area, but I'm sure you can find a way for them to link all of their pieces of paper together in a long paper chain and then connect with different people all around the church until the whole church has made one long paper chain. Then take some time to pray over the whole paper chain, praying for everything that has been written down, everything that's been drawn, all the different prayers that people have brought before God. And then our fifth and final prayer idea are spider's web prayers. I don't know if you've ever played the game, it's a bit of an icebreaker that's regularly used, where you get a ball of wool or a ball of string, and you hold on to one bit and then you throw the ball to someone else. Usually I've used this as kind of a game to get to know different people's names and get to know people if you're in a new group, and you end up with this piece of string that's kind of going one to the next person, over to another person, back over to another person and it makes a kind of spider's web because each person is still holding on to their bit of string. But if you wanted to use this as a way of leading prayers in church, you could do it by getting each person who catches the ball of string or the ball of wool to lead a short bit of prayer. Depending on the kind of group you have and how confident and happy they would be to be praying out loud and leading prayer, you could do something super simple where everyone just says something that they want to say thank you to God for. So they have just that simple sentence of thank you God for and then they fill in the blank when they catch the string or the wool. Or it could be a bit more complicated where they have as much time as they like to lead a short bit of prayer to God. But it's just a great way to get different people involved in leading the prayers and bringing all different things to God at once. And once you've finished you'll see this big spider's web across the church or across whatever building you're using just representing all of the different prayers that have been prayed. So those are just five different creative ways that you could lead prayers in church. Let me know down in the comments which of these you would like to try in your church or if you have your own creative prayer ideas that you use to lead intercessions, let us know and we'd love to hear your ideas too. We hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have, please do give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from me and Arnold. And we will see you very soon with a new video. Bye!